You're currently watching video E5 P1-4, which is the Moon Phase Model Activity Lab. What you'll do, if you uh, do not already have this material, you can find it on our website. Again, by clicking on the bottom left-hand corner there, the E5.P1 unit. And uh, when you do that, you'll be taken to the website, and you can find that activity uh, right here, the Moon Phase Model Activity, or you can use the digital student checklist which is at the bot at the top here for video E5 P14 moon phase model activity lab all right so if you have the activity lab uh, here's what it looks like the moon phase uh, model activity all right the learning targets uh, that have already been mentioned uh, I'll rephrase describe the motion of celestial bodies and some of the effects of these motions uh, so what we're going to be doing with is the moon phases all right so uh, what you'll see is uh, you'll start off with the engage, which is to take uh, the work envelope and read the letter inside. The letter uh, you will find, uh, which is right here, you'll be asked to read that to give you uh, kind of a background information about what it is that you're being asked to do. Then the first part is to explore. Uh, you're going to create two different moon phase models. Uh, that will basically ask you to put them in the correct positions as to what the moon looks like uh, when we are viewing it from Earth and also when we are viewing it from space. So we're going to give you two different perspectives that I would like for you to look at. Okay. So once you have created the actual model, then you're going to be asked to, uh, to answer the questions about limitations uh, that may be uh, due to where uh, we are on Earth as we view uh, what's taking place and then also the limitations viewed from space. So let's start by talking about uh, where you find your materials and what's in the bags. All right, so here we go. All right, the materials in which you're going to have for this lab come in these uh, plastic gallon bags. Uh, you'll have one that's labeled view from uh, Earth You'll have another one which says view from space. What you're going to do is you'll open up those packages and inside of them you will find a assortment of different types of plates. And what you'll do is you'll want to take all of these and then spread them around your model earth because this is what it looks like again in this bag that we're using view from earth. You want to create a diagram that is going to show where the model sun, the yellow plate is, in relationship to where Earth is, which is the blue plate with the Earth in it, and then position all of these different plates in their correct location as the moon would look as we are looking at it from Earth. Okay, so you'll basically construct one large diagram with all of these plates. Once you've constructed that diagram, you'll move over to the view from space, and you're going to take all of these plates that you see in this stack and you are going to place them in the correct location along with the correct uh, way that is again if you are viewing it from space so you're outside of earth looking at how the moon is lit up in relationship to where the sun is what would it look like from space okay so that will be the use of the actual uh, materials for uh, the first page when you're asked to explore and asked to construct the diagrams. Now you may, may still be wondering about what does this model look like? Don't worry, I'll get to that point in one moment uh, and I'll also show you a, a quick little video tutorial about what that will look like. So once you, video, once you have constructed your uh, diagram, uh, both for what it looks like as we view it from Earth and also as we view it from the sun or uh, from space, uh, what, you, what I would like for you to do is to use the sticky notes that are located uh, in your packet to write down any wonderings you may have. And by wonderings, uh, any questions you may have regarding the actual model or models that you guys have, have constructed. This is a way for you to kind of reflect about some of the questions you may have regarding why you may have put something in one location and not another. Uh, why you may have named it a particular phase. Um, but it's more or less your way of kind of asking yourself, what don't I understand? And then writing it down. 
And then when you're ready, uh, simply call myself or Mr. Uh, Fusak over to you. And uh, then what we'll have you do is we'll go through your wonderings with you uh, and have a discussion. Uh, and then when you are finally done with that discussion, uh, we'll ask for you to complete the Moon Phase uh, worksheet, which you can find at the very back page here, the Moon Phase worksheet. Uh, which says the moon phase worksheet at the top and then the instructions about labeling the moon phases uh, where you find them uh, based on the actual diagram all right so let's uh, let's show you what a diagram looks like and uh, how you're going to complete the next portion of this uh, lab all right once you've constructed one of your diagrams uh, as you can see right here and I'm going to tell you, just as a forewarning, this is not correct, all right? This is not correct. So those of you that are looking at this going, oh, I could just put it like this and get the right answer. The answer, I'm telling you right now, this is not the correct uh, way in which this diagram is set up, okay? What you've, once you've corrected or, uh, correctly put them in the position that you believe them to be, you're going to use the sticky notes to uh, write down anything that you have as far as wonderings go. Uh, anything that as you're looking at your diagram and the placement of each of these plates, you're going to want to write down uh, anything that you may have questions about uh, and then Mr. Fusak or myself will, uh, will join your group and we'll uh, discuss them. The second portion is you have been given a set of papers that have this specific types of names for each of the phases of the moon. What you're also going to want to do is you're going to want to take those and you're going to want to place those onto each of the plates based upon the name that you believe it to be um, for each of the models. So when it's all said and done, you'll have placed uh, the plates in their locations and you'll also given the name to that phase uh, at each location across your diagram that you have. Okay. All right, once you've uh, done your wonderings and you've completed the moon phase worksheet, uh, then we're going to ask for you to explain how these two models which you have created, both the view from space and also the view from Earth, are connected. Um, meaning that discuss in this space below uh, what you have seen from Earth and also space in regarding how the moon uh, illuminate is illuminated by the sun. So talking about the portions which are lit up, portions that are not lit up, talk about the similarities, possibly the differences, but how are they physically connected is what we're aiming for. Once you've completed that portion, then what we're going to ask for you to do is to make sure that you have returned each of the model materials to the correct gallon bag. All right, so you should find that all the materials that came from the bag uh, view from Earth should be in there, including the sticky notes along with, um, <clears throat> excuse me, along with uh, the label sheets telling you the different phases of the moon. And then the other bag, uh, View from Space, you should also have the correct materials located there. And if you don't know what goes in which bag, because somehow you've mixed them up, just ask. Okay, just ask. All right. Once you've uh, properly uh, put the materials away, then uh, what we're going to ask for you to do is to do a an elaborate <coughs> activity. And what we're going to ask for you to do in this activity is to take uh, the, the little knowledge that you have gained about the moon phases uh, and as well as reviewing the letter that you received from the Johnson Space Control, uh, we would like for you to answer the following two questions. When does the specific moon phase uh, next occur? Meaning, uh, when is the new moon going to take place? And then, more specifically, we're going to ask you to tell us what... Uh, what is the meaning of those days in which the new moon is going to take place? That brand new phase of the new moon. Okay. Um, and I'm going to skip ahead. The last part right here is the evaluation process. Uh, in the evaluation process, uh, we would like you to consider the following four questions when answering these questions. Number one, what is the diagram about? So what is the diagram trying to show you? Second, what's, uh, what's the question really asking you? So when you look at the diagram, you're going to find a question below. So really think about what the question is asking you. And then the third is where can you find the answer in the actual diagram? So as you're looking at the diagram, you're reading through the question, where can you find it as it's being displayed or shown within the diagram? And then the last is, are there any distractors? Meaning, is there any information which is located in the diagram or in the question 
which is not true and is trying to lead you to uh, a possible answer that is not correct. You'll find that there is not only just one question, there is also a second, which you will find right here. And again, the same four questions apply. Uh, using this diagram uh, to answer the questions, you know, evaluating you know, what's in the diagram that's good information, what's in the diagram that's bad information, what's in the question that's good information, or possibly leading you down a path to answer a question that uh, will lead you to a wrong answer. Okay, and then when you're all said and done, uh, when it's all, when you have completed all of this, just let Mr. Fusak or myself know, and uh, we'll have some things that we'd like to uh, go over with you uh, regarding this. All right, good luck. Let us know if you have any questions.